Ondo State Police Command says his officers and other security agencies are set for the conduct of the Saturday governorship election in the state. Speaking with newsmen at a special parade in Akure, the Ondo State Capital, the Public Relations Officer T. Leo says the command and other security agencies will protect life and property during and after the Saturday governorship election in the state. And joining us live is the President Transition Monitoring Group. Joining us live is the President Transition Monitoring Group, TMG, Dr. Abiola Akiode Afolabi. Thank you for joining us. And it's a pleasure to be here. As a foremost observer group, what are the findings from your preliminary report? Well, um, uh, we're here. We've been here for like a um, few days and we had sent um, uh, some consultants to do some pre-election assessment. Uh, as of yesterday, uh, we're talking to uh, our coordinators from the 18 local government um, to give us an assessment of um, the situation in the state. Um, as, of this, uh, as of today, um, we feel this that we've been here, it appears quite um, peaceful. Um, there are a whole lot of uh, security officials in and around town, which is also quite um, worrisome. But by and large, it looks like um, the state is prepared uh, for the election. And if you uh, look at the number of people that have uh, picked up their uh, permanent voters card, uh, it gives the impression that um, there's going to be very good turnout. Uh, if this election is properly controlled, because what it means is that people are interested in voting. Uh, we have over like 80% collection of the PVC, which is quite encouraging if you compare it to uh, other previous elections. So the, uh, the Sunshine State seems to be ready uh, for the election. Um, so it then depends on the other nuances. As long as things are right, it looks like we're going to have a, a peaceful election in those states. Uh, one critical area that uh, usually uh, concerns uh, you is uh, security. Are there flashpoints you would expect security presence? I mean, more security uh, presence. Well, um, as you know, if you look at um, historically, um, we have had uh, quite a lot of um, issues and concern around the um, Mundo election. And if you also recall that um, some few months ago, uh, there was also a fire incident at the INIC office. And there has also been a, a lot of allegation about stockpiling of arms. And people are saying that around the town that um, uh, there are militias and there are also people coming from other towns that people are suspecting, you know, might be miscreants who have been brought in for um, election purposes. Uh, there are quite a number of security agencies around, but I think that for us as civil society organization, uh, we've always been concerned about militarization of elections and the implication of that, you know, for the outcome of election, because it can be two ways. One, people can feel protected uh, while they see that uh, a huge number of uh, police or uh, soldiers around, but at the same time, it could also constitute uh, some form of intimidation and threats to uh, people uh, being able to come out, you know, to vote. So, so for me, I, I think that it's important since the security officers are there, are here already, uh, that the agencies uh, work in accordance with uh, the what is expected from security officials in terms of decorum uh, and ensuring that there's orderliness uh, during the election. So in terms of places where we have identified as uh, hot spots, um, I think um, from our conversation with uh, people, uh, in Ajay Seudo is one area that we think um, we need to watch out for as hot spots. Ibo Uluji is also another place that has been, um, uh, have been flashed uh, it's like a hot, hot spot that we have identified. Akoko East, uh, even within Akure, uh, Akure South West is also another place. Owo is another place, Idore. So there are quite a number of hot spots that, you know, uh, become quite worrisome if we are measuring about um, eight uh, major towns across the state. So meaning that the uh, security really have a lot of work to do in terms of, you know, curtailing the possibility of violence in this election. All right. Um, you, in your speech, of course, uh, said it's important that security agencies are present 
uh, for the election. But, you know, um, on the flip side, um, the idea of over-militarization of the election, do you think that we might be having the same issue in Ondo State? Yeah, well, if, um, you know, there are, there, are, there are best practices that we have had in, in recent past. For example, in Edo State, about five security uh, officials were uh, designated to uh, polling units and they were not expected to carry arms. Uh, they were expected to ensure that um, everything go, go on smoothly. If we have that um, kind of uh, decorum that they had in Edo State, maybe uh, that would probably help in ensuring uh, peaceful elections. But um, from what we can see, there, are, there seems to be a lot of barricades and um, there seems to be a lot of sirens and um, all around. So it looks like um, people are a little bit concerned about um, how uh, we would be able to manage this huge number of security presence, you know, in the state. Um, so it's, it's, it's a big concern because we need to get to a level in our election where uh, we don't have to have that presence of security at polling units or around the town. For about one week now, uh, we have seen quite, you know, a number of police and that's quite intimidating. And uh, we have spoken to some few people who felt that uh, they are afraid and some people felt protected. So for me, it's a two-way, two side of the coin thing. And I think what is important is that the security agencies that are around should, be, uh, should act in accordance uh, to the rule of the game, should uh, uh, not show any form of bias, for any political parties, uh, uh, because uh, Nigerians actually find it very difficult, you know, to trust uh, police or any of the security agents. So it's important that they play their role uh, in accordance to the rule in, the, in yep. this election. Conducting election in a pandemic, at least we've tried um, with the Edo uh, state uh, election, a lot of persons uh, commended uh, the process. Uh, then again, um, what is your level uh, I mean the TMG now, your level of engagement uh, with um, stakeholders when it comes to the issue of uh, safety, that these uh, elections will be conducted safely and people don't go home uh, catching some sort of infection. Well, this is quite important. What we have done is to include this as part of our assessment, uh, in our assessment tool for the election, to find out whether there are uh, uh, expected social distancing. Uh, we noticed that in a dose state, that was not uh, very much complied with. And it's one of the recommendations that we had uh, sent across to INEC in terms of they need to do more in terms of ensuring uh, social distancing. Uh, it might also be very difficult in some instances because the way we have also allocated our polling units might also make it very impossible, you know, to have social distancing. I recall in one of the polling uh, areas that we went to in uh, Edo, it's a, it's a secondary school, and we had about 25, you know, polling units in such a place. So many that were expected over like 5,000 people gathered together in a particular place. It will be very difficult to have uh, social distancing in that regard. So we feel that it is uh, important that uh, election is conducted in a very safe environment, that people also go to uh, cast their votes, you know, without, you know, risking their lives. So it's, uh, so one of the things that we've been doing is try to uh, educate people on the need to ensure social distancing. But I must tell you, uh, having gone around the states, I am not very sure that um, there is uh, a, a, a whole lot of compliance happening in Undo State. It, it seems is, that, it is. Um, we might really have um, a problem ensuring compliance. Yes, social issue. distancing indeed uh, would be a tricky one to maintain. Yes. But, I mean, we've also been told that um, in the absence of being able to maintain that required um, um, level of distance apart, uh, we must ensure that we use our face mask. Do you uh, see that INEG is... Um, going to ensure compliance and these officers, security officials that will be there will be part of the process? Well, I think it's important for them to do that. Um, I, I recall that in a do in, at the initial stage of the election, uh, this was being complied with. But later on, uh, people disregarded this. I, I think um, INEC and electoral uh, officials uh, should be able to uh, enforce that. And I, and I think what is also very important is that we should continue to educate people that this is very important, that COVID-19 is real and it's around town, and, uh, and that we all owe ourselves that responsibility to ensure that we keep safe. Uh, so we do hope that uh, in Edo State, we saw INEC with um, um, 
um, hand sanitizers and all of that. And um, there were uh, steps towards ensuring it. But I think that we need to speak to voters to uh, let them understand that it's important, you know, for them to be safe, you know, during this election. Uh, but as I said, uh, looking around the town, it looks like people are not complying. Complying. So I hope that on election day, since that is one of the preconditions, you know, for you to even come to the uh, polling unit. So I hope that um, it will be enforced on that day. That's uh, 24 hours uh, before the elections kick off proper. Um, and of course, we also understand that you will be addressing the press in a few hours. Um, what is the atmosphere like? currently in Ondo State, especially in Akure, where you uh, currently are? Well, it, it appears very uh, peaceful. Um, we have been engaging with people. Um, people seem to be very excited that, the, and, and that they will be able to cast their votes, votes uh, in the coming days. Um, there, you can also see on the line in that piece some kind of tension um, around, especially because the political parties have heated up the polity uh, before the elections. So there are speculations that there might be uh, one form of uh, violence at the other. Uh, but um, uh, by and large, um, there are a whole lot of appeal also with some of the things that have been happening in the last few days uh, with the peace accord being signed, with the debates being uh, conducted, uh, and the fact that uh, there is also the presence of civil society organization uh, monitoring and ensuring and also talking to citizens uh, about the need to have a peaceful election. So by and large, I would say that um, uh, it appears quite peaceful, um, at least in the last three, three days that I have been here. Uh, there has not been any uh, major uh, 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 re report that we have gotten. So we do hope that uh, the state would be able to keep this up you know, up until uh, the election tomorrow. But underlining this, as I said, it looks like people are scared. Uh, there's some kind of tension uh, that uh, people uh, don't really know uh, what the political parties are capable, you know, of doing in the coming 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are also speculations of vote buying uh, that is also going on. Uh, people are negotiating and all of that. And people are already uh, giving people indomie, spaghettis, uh, for uh, some foodstuffs and uh, money and all of that. So um, that's also another concern, you know, for us in terms of uh, 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 what's the transactional nature of this COVID election. Um, just quickly, before we uh, talk about uh, other issues, I, I want to take you up on something you said about the uh, signing of a peace pact uh, by the candidates. Uh, there was the Oba factor uh, in Edo State, and then we had some big names uh, as part of the process. Um, what are the big factors that you think would uh, compel some level of compliance uh, when it comes to uh, the agreements of a peaceful process, especially uh, when we know that uh, before now there's been some uh, violence among uh, party faithfuls? Well, I think that the Undo people are also very religious anyway. And it looks like um, the religious leaders have also been playing some very important role in uh, uh, conversing for peace. And if you look at the peace accord, we have people like uh, Reverend Father Kuka. We have some very eminent Nigerians who, you know, participated in the process. And um, it's been quite, um, I think that there seems to be some form of assurance after the peace part, because uh, speaking with some uh, of our members yesterday, uh, they keep re referring to the fact that there was a peace part. And um, since um, all the political parties seem to have um, agreed to the peace part, maybe that would uh, in a way uh, affect uh, um, their their stance uh, you know, towards the election. So I think that the peace part has been an interesting uh, Thing that has come into our electoral policy, and that has been quite useful. Uh, getting political parties to come and commit, you know, before the people, you know, on what uh, they need to do well, you know, during the election. So I, I, I hope that um, the fact that they are religious is a very big factor, and the fact that uh, after that, I think the religious leaders are also uh, taking this, you know, up at uh, different religious places to uh, tell people to to be peaceful. But I must tell you that. Um, um, uh, looking back to other elections in Ondo, if you remember the Omobori Owo and a whole lot of other things. So it's a very volatile state. And yes, indeed. We, 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 we share your hope. We share your hope that um, the people 
uh, will follow the path of peace. Let's talk about the INEC uh, results viewing portal uh, where results are uploaded in real time from polling units. Uh, do you share the opinion that it contributed to the success of the Edo election and that will be replicated um, in Ondo election? Because we know that there are concerns about some of the um, resident electoral officers. Well, I, I think that, um, um, well, it, 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 it's, it's, I would say it has um, contributed because, you know, one of the things that the INEC Resort Viewing Center has done is to also instill some kind of trust and confidence, you know, uh, in uh, electorates to say that you can see real time uh, some of the uh, results, which uh, were not things that we were doing before. Um, I think one of one of the essence of the uh, Resort Viewing Center is to be able to uh, ensure some form of transparency and accountability. I know that um, during the Edo election there were instances where there were network problems and people were expecting, you know, to see, uh, to view some of things, uh, we saw, but they were not uh, coming up. But I think that it's a step in the right direction. Uh, that are, it's important for people to be able to follow the votes. And I think what that has done is to ensure that Nigerians can uh, follow the votes and be able to uh, know what is happening real time as the election progresses. So by and large, we expect that um, INEC should be able to improve on the uh, uh, viewing center uh, in Undo election. And, I, and we feel that if um, that, uh, having that available would contribute to uh, whatever success that would have in this coming election. Yeah, the, the book is on INEC to make sure that uh, they do whatever needs to be done to ensure that this election is free, fair, and credible so that people can trust uh, in the uh, institution going forward. All right, I'm, I'm going to do a follow-up. Um, one of the things uh, my colleague just uh, mentioned um, about uh, trust with re regards to returning officers, the PDP, uh, through Governor Shei Makinde, has uh, called for a replacement of the returning officer because he's, uh, of course, from the hometown of the incumbent governor and other reasons. Do you think this call is legitimate at this hour? Well, um, I, 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 it's either it's neither here nor there because I think that uh, by this uh, time, Heineck should know uh, the, uh, the, the, that it's important and critical uh, not to have indigent to be returning officer. And I am sure that probably INEC would not do that. So this is still at the level of speculation. There are procedures in terms of who becomes returning officer, and I am sure that INEC would not uh, violate what is expected from them in terms of ensuring that the appropriate thing is done, because the returning officer also matters in terms of uh, the credibility of that election. Uh, and the fact that the person is not affiliated to any of the political parties, uh, either by birth or by any other connection, also becomes very, very uh, important. So I, I feel that, and that's why I'm saying that um, it's a illegitimate concern, but it's left for I like to ensure that uh, uh, such speculations are not uh, founded, because if it is founded, it will probably cast some form of aspersion on the uh, process of the election. All right. All right. Uh, before we let you go, I want to um, ask you about some of the lessons from the Edo uh, governorship election that you hope to see uh, implemented in the Ondo uh, election. I mean, also from your recommendation from uh, the election in Edo State. Well, um, one of the uh, concerns has always been the uh, uh, logistic uh, uh, crisis that we normally have with INEC. Um, in a dual election, we had very few cadres not working, uh, but we still had one or two. We still have some instances uh, like that, though not very significant. Uh, so for me, I think that um, one of the things that um, needs to be done is for INEC to, to step up its game to ensure that uh, everything is done orderly, uh, the cadres are functioning. Uh, in a dual state, uh, some of the polling units uh, didn't set up on time. Uh, if you remember that they started around 8.30, uh, some polling units didn't set up until about 10, 11, and thereabout. So I do hope that Ellen Einek could have learned from that to ensure that um, we don't have a repeat of that. Uh, at TMG was at the CBN yesterday, and we recorded that some of the sensitive materials have left, you know, for 
their destination. So, and you know that in on those that we have quite uh, riverine areas and all of that. So, where things need to get to on time. So I hope that um, there are enough steps that have been taken, you know, to ensure that things, uh, the materials get, you know, to all these places that are far away, uh, so that um, uh, election can start, you know, at the same time. Uh, one of the things that we have always been talking of about is the need to uh, onboard INEC and um, to ensure that uh, some other groups take uh, uh, part in these processes. There are issues of transportation that we still have some problems in Edo uh, about. Uh, so I, I think that these and other uh, issues, uh, INEC needs to step up this game so that we don't keep having uh, this kind of uh, logistical problem, you know, uh, repeated in election. But by and large, um, I think in a dual election, the security officials actually uh, uh, were up to the game. They, 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 they were scored very high for uh, decorum and a whole lot of other things. So I do hope that in this election, they would also uh, follow suit. Uh, political parties, uh, there were a lot of vote buying uh, during that election. So we do hope that this election wouldn't have you know, less of that. One of the things that we had also talked about in terms of electoral offenses is the need for us to have a mobile court you know, that can summarily uh, prosecute election offenders. So we do hope that um, this that future issues so that um, we would be developing our electoral system in a manner that uh, would contribute to democracy as we go by. All right, uh, Dr. Abiola Akiodea Folabi, thank you so much for speaking with us. And of course, I hope that we can have a follow up conversation after the election. Okay, we look forward to it. Thank you so much for listening. You're welcome.